There are few things you can count on in life. Death, taxes, Murphy's Law not going in your favor, hitting your funny bone, getting stuck in traffic, and maybe most important of all, completely transparent cash flow results from the average Joe investor every single month. So let's talk about my portfolio, how much cash flow I generated in the month of October, where all of my positions stand today, and maybe most important of all, what were my biggest learning opportunities as a cash flow investor for the month, and how do my portfolio results compare against a number of different investment options? All right, guys, we're going to jump right into it here. We're going to look at my portfolio results specifically for the month of October. Then we'll also back out a little bit and look at the entire year to date performance for the portfolio. And then we'll also look at the performance all the way back to when we first started tracking it in January of 2021. We'll look at the overall portfolio value change. We'll take a look at how much the portfolio has actually grown percentage wise when we factor out the deposits year to date and we'll look at the monthly cash flow. All right, so we can see here my portfolio was worth as of the end of September, $154,214.64. And at the end of October, October 31st, 2022, the portfolio was worth $168,646.65. So the portfolio grew 9.36% for the month, factoring in deposits. And if you factor out the money added to the portfolio, it grew 6.76%. So for the month of October, 2022, the cash flow I generated from the portfolio factoring in dividends as well as the actual option premium was $2,376.55. And I'll break that down for you exactly how I generated that shortly. For those of you watching my channel or watching these cash flow reports for the very first time, just know this is my specific strategy that I utilize in my portfolio. This is a brokerage account, not a retirement account, because I need the money in the next three to five years, specifically for our family's big 2024 year long trip around the country where we're gonna take the kids out of school, I'm gonna take a leave of absence from my normal job, and spoiler alert, maybe completely quitting my job and doing this and starting my own financial practice full time. If I didn't have these short term goals, this money would be in a retirement account or at least in a Roth IRA where I can shelter a lot of the income and then take out the contributions if I need them before age 59 and a half. The specific strategy is cash flow oriented. I own quality dividend stock. When I say quality dividend stocks, I mean dividend stocks that have a history of raising dividends for at least 10 consecutive years that grow their dividend every year by at least the amount of the long-term inflation rate. And in some cases, greater than the short-term inflation rate at eight, nine, 10% year over year. These dividend stocks also have a very safe dividend payout ratio based on free cash flow. And I like to target dividend yields above 3%, but I'm willing to go below 3% if that dividend stock also has a very rich option chain. Because while some of my cash flow is generated from dividends, absolutely, a large portion of it is also generated from option premium by selling covered calls on a lot of the positions. Here's a breakdown of all of the transactions I received for the month of October. And we're gonna look at a cleaner version of this, but just so you can see it all, this is all factored into that net option premium for the month of October. For this month, approximately $361.56 right here was generated from actual dividends for the month. The rest of it was option premium. And the reality is this has changed quite a bit from the previous months because I've transitioned a lot of my assets into still quality dividend stocks, yes, but ones that pay quarterly and also have rich option chains. And as a result, some of the months are gonna have lower dividend income because a lot of the dividend stocks don't pay that month. All right, here's a much cleaner view of the actual option activity for the month of October for me. And full awareness here, if you're part of the Patreon community and part of the Discord chat, I keep this updated real time and you can see exactly what changes I make in my own portfolio every single day by checking this spreadsheet. And as part of that, you get an open window into my exact portfolio, what positions I own, what my cost basis is, where my gains are, and also the assets I hold in my other retirement accounts. All right, this is sorted alphabetically here so we can see which positions I sold call options on for the month. We've got Aflac Incorporated right here, which I sold one option on this month. Then I have Altria Group, which was a position I previously owned and I specifically sold covered calls so I could actually get assigned on this position as I transition the assets into more quality dividend stocks with better opportunities for growth and a combination of actual option premium. Then we've got Best Buy Incorporated, one that's currently in my portfolio right now, one that I really like. It's got great option premium and a great dividend yield. Then we've got Colgate Palmolive right here. This is a position I still own in my portfolio. We've got Comcast, another one I still own. Devon Energy here, which is no longer in my portfolio. That's a good story. We'll talk about that one soon. Dick's Sporting Goods. This is actually a put option. This one never actually made it into my portfolio. Then we've got Enbridge, one that used to be in my portfolio. We'll talk about that one. 
Exxon Mobil right here. Gilead Sciences, this one is still in my portfolio. HP Incorporated, this one was in my portfolio and did get assigned, we'll talk about that. Then we've got Intel, which is currently in my portfolio. We've also got the Russell 2000. This is one of the ways that I balance cash flow and growth. This one I was able to sell quite a few call options during the month, and that is primarily because this investment has the ability to sell more options as they offer expirations on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, as opposed to most of the investments which only offer weekly, if not only monthly option expirations. We have Manulife Financial Corporation, which is no longer in the portfolio. Again, an investment that transitioned over to more quality dividend stocks that have growth and option premium. Then we've got Nike Incorporated right here. Then we had Phillips 66 right here. This was a put option that never actually got assigned, so I never owned owned the shares of PSX. Then we've got Schwab right here, which is a core holding in my portfolio because of its balance with capital appreciation and dividend payments, dividend growth, and the ability to sell options. And then the S&P 500 ETF right here, SPY, is one that I primarily sold put options in for the month of October. It actually is now in my portfolio where I'm selling covered calls. Then we've got Starbucks Corporation, which is in my own portfolio. T. Rowe Price, which is in my portfolio, and Verizon Communications, which is also in my portfolio still. Here's a brief look into my portfolio as of November 11th at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Again, this is something you have real-time access to as part of the Patreon community, but I'm gonna give you a little window here into what it looks like. You'll notice here that based on the percentage of accounts breakdown, while I do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different individual dividend stocks. I also have three other positions. I have Schwab, which is a dividend ETF right here. And then I also have the S&P 500 right here, which I sell covered calls on, and the Russell 2000 ETF right here. You'll notice I'm down on a few positions, primarily Verizon Communications, which I bought around $54 a share, and it's currently only worth about $39, $37 a share. I'm also down on the Russell 2000 by about $600 a share, not too bad. Intel's another one that I bought at a relatively high price and it's dropped quite a bit. I bought it around 49. It's only worth about 30 right now. Comcast, another one I'm pretty red on right now. Bought it around 48, worth about 33 right now. So you've got my overall current dividend portfolio worth 159,917. Month to date cash flow so far in the portfolio, $774, which I track right here, which is my November 22. All right, so these were the four dividend stocks that I got assigned on in the month of October. These three right here, Devon Energy, Enbridge, and ExxonMobil was just a factor of me being a big victim of the rise in oil prices that shot up in the past couple of months. A lot of these zoomed way past my cost basis, and I got so deep in the money on these positions that I wasn't really able to roll them for any type of a credit, so I let them get assigned. Now for Exxon and for Enbridge, both of these I actually was able to get assigned for a profit. My learning opportunity with Devon Energy was when prices got down to about 60, 58, 56, I decided to sell a covered call at 60 thinking I had plenty of room and then the stock price just shot way past 60 up to like 68, 69, 70 and I lost my opportunity to roll. So the big learning opportunity with Devon Energy was when you have high volatility dividend stocks, and Devon Energy is definitely high volatility, when you go below your cost basis, you really have to be patient and just say, I'm gonna hold, I'm not gonna sell any calls until I get much closer to my cost basis, then I'll have the opportunity to continue to sell covered calls. This was also the case with ExxonMobil here. HP, this one was kind of embarrassing. I just was got so busy with life. My strike price was $28. It literally ended on the expiration date, October 28th, at like $28.03. And because I wasn't watching it and I hadn't set an appointment and a reminder to check my uh, for rolling my options, I got assigned even though I had the clear opportunity to roll this option and continue to sell covered calls. So that was just, that one was on me. So none of these four positions are actually in my portfolio anymore as a result. So we're gonna look here at how my portfolio has compared month to date and year to date and since the beginning of tracking it in January of 2021 against a number of different investments, which you can see pictured here. All these positions were tracked all the way back from January 2021 through today, looking at the actual prices, the actual dividends received, if I had only exclusively invested in these other options. So we've got the NASDAQ 100, QQQ, the S&P 500, SPY as a standalone investment, investing 100% into SCHD, Devo, another dividend ETF, QYLD right here, Jeppy and BlackRock, which is a new addition here, BST, which is one that others have asked me to include in this comparison. So my portfolio is definitely outperforming when you factor in all these. However, it's getting a little bit closer here on overall portfolio value. I'm at 168,646. We've got some other close ones here, Schwab's SCHD and Devo are both worth 165 based on all the deposits I've made and all the dividends earned and the actual performance of the investment. Then we've got 159 for Jeppy, 
right here, 147 for the S&P 500 right here, and some of the ones that are bringing up the rear here, QQQ at 127, QYLD at 129, and BlackRock worth only $104,000. For the month, my portfolio gained 9.36%. However, there were others that did better. SCHD, Devo at worth each grew 14%. However, the reality is this portfolio is not built just to increase in portfolio value. I'm okay with that, right? And I don't wanna lose value dramatically, but I'm not worried about how my portfolio necessarily grows in comparison to others what I am focused on is monthly cash flow. And you'll notice here that going away, I am by far the best cash flow. Month to date, I almost doubled up everybody here. My portfolio generated $2,376.55. Second place went to Jeppy at $1,353. QYLD generated $1,299. Devo generated $644. BST generated $831. And these investments here, SCHD, S&P 500, and QQQ, all did not generate any cash flow for the month because they pay quarterly. These number here, when it says capital plus or minus and capital percentage, means that we're isolating the actual growth of the portfolio and factoring out the actual deposit amounts. There's only two investments that are green so far year to date, which is my portfolio and the Devo investment, each of which have grown about $5,000 to $6,000. The biggest drops here year to date are QQQ, which dropped $37,000, and BST, which dropped $33,000. Jeppy is just about flat here. And same with SCHD, about flat. They're just a slight bit red year to date. And you'll notice from a cash flow perspective, I am running away with it still. I've generated $18,000 year to date. And again, a part of the year, I wasn't even selling covered calls really. It was only dividend income. So this number actually would be even bigger if I'd done it for the entire year. But I'm at 18,000 year to date in cash flow versus 12 for Jeppy, 11 for QYLD. And then we've got BST at 69.51. But these other investments really much lower at just under $4,000 for SCHD, and then S&P 500 and QQQ, very low. All right, here are the cumulative numbers here. My portfolio still had the most cash flow since January of 2021, but not by much here. It's gonna continue to grow though above and beyond QYLD since I'm generating more cash flow now. But the reason these numbers are still close right here is because for a good portion of the year, I wasn't selling covered calls, especially last year into this year. So those numbers will continue to grow farther apart. But QYLD in second place in cash flow, Jeppy at 18,000 in third place, then BST at 14,994. Then we've got 10,000 for Devo, 7,000 for SCHD. When you factor in deposits, this is pretty insane here, guys. I know that a lot of people have asked me about BST. Since these portfolios were tracked and starting at $52,000 each, meaning a lump investment into these investments of 52,000 in January, that's the assumption, and all the way through today, I mean, three investments here. QYLD is down 24%, okay? Then we've got QQQ down 29%, but the big one here, man, look at this. BST is down 72%, 72%. So I mean, if you're not in it right now and you want it for cash flow, then maybe buy it now because it's really low compared to his historical prices. But here, but man, if you've owned it this entire time, it has been a drag on your portfolio. Now make sure to check out the Discord chat and the Patreon community. There's a link in the description below if you want to join the community of Average Joe investors over there. Got hundreds of people all working together to learn from each other and to generate as much cash flow as possible. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. I respond to all comments received on the day I post a video. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.